Hello, welcome to episode 5 of Making Terraria in Python. Today we're going to be covering some simple physics. So in the last video, we made this simple player, and this player moves across the screen. Today we're going to be applying gravity to it, allowing this player to jump and collide with different things. So let's get into it. So the first thing we want to do is actually make a player for the, or a, um, we, so the first thing we want to do is actually make a floor for this player to fall on. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just going to create a new entity, and this entity is going to be in the group self.sprites. And the image, we're going to do a pygame.surface. And I'm going to make this a large one. So for the size, we're going to do tile size times 10, and then just tile size, because it doesn't need to be that tall. And now for the position, we're going to specify, let's say, 400 by uh, 550. Why not? And so now if we run it, hopefully that will work properly. Um, and we are actually moving it, so that's not good. Um, what we have to do is let's just remove this movement So we're not moving our sprites because we don't need to move them anymore There we go. We have a proper platform to fall on so let's go ahead and fall on it So in the player here, we're going to create some new stuff um, So we're going to actually create a weight This player is going to have its own little weight and we're going to be applying an acceleration of gravity based on the um, mass of the player we could say mass weight uh, it's you know, don't don't kill me uh, physics majors. I'm just uh, doing what works in the um, game realm. It doesn't have to be perfectly accurate to the real world. So for this, I'm going to do uh, I guess I'll do a self dot mass, and I'm honestly not sure of the number, so I'm just going to put five here. Um, this is just going to be the mass of our player, and then the globals we want a gravity constant, and I actually already have it here. And the reason we're putting it in the globals and not in the player is because the acceleration of gravity does not change um, based on the person. Like we're all affected by the same amount of gravity on planet Earth. So we're going to have a gravity constant. And you'll notice that I also have a terminal velocity. And this is the same thing where we're just going to be capping the speed um, of the of the velocity of like an, an entity based on the terminal velocity um, and, and the um, mass of that entity. And so this isn't a physics lesson, but we are implementing some basic physics, so I thought I would go ahead and cover that a little bit. So here, now that we have a mass, what we're going to do is we're going to actually apply a constant downward velocity to our player. So what we'll do is we'll do self.velocity.y, and then we'll do plus equals gravity multiplied by mass. And this is just increasing our, our velocity by that calculation. And now if we run it, you'll see that we are falling at an exponential rate. It's actually not that bad, five, pretty good. So now that we have that, um, we actually have to have a way to collide with the floor. And so for this, we're going to have to be able to access our uh, block, our scene floor. So for this, what we're going to do is we're going to create a whole new group for this. And this is going to be our blocks group. And you'll notice that I already have it here. And this blocks group, is just another group. I can do self.blocks equals pygame.sprite.group. And what we're going to do is um, in the player, we're not going to pass it this, but we're instead going to put it in our parameters. But first we need to actually give one of these entities this uh, block group as an argument. And so this is our floor. So I'm gonna comment, say this is our floor. And we are going to actually pass this self.blocks into our groups list. So now this entity is part of the block group. And so remember that we have an argument called parameters, and this is a dictionary. So I'm going to actually pass in the block group. So I'm going to do for the key, a block group, and then for the value self.blocks. And the reason I'm using this parameters dictionary instead of just passing it in directly is because we're going to be working with multiple groups and multiple different values and stuff like that, items, weapons, all that sort of stuff. And so I prefer just having one dictionary that has all my parameters instead of um, having to put a comma and then put weapon group here and then one for item group, you know, all that stuff. I prefer just putting it in one dictionary like that. So for now, we are going to create our parameters section here, and we're going to do self.block group equals the parameters at, and then for the key value, we're going to do block underscore group. So now we have this block group, so let's go ahead and check collisions. So I'm going to make a new method called def check collisions, send it self, and then send it the direction that we are checking for. And this is because we want to check collisions horizontal first, 
then vertical next or vice versa, but we do not want to check horizontal and vertical at the same time. And the reason is because of corner collisions. When you're using rectangles for collisions, if you collide in the corner and you're checking for both horizontal and vertical at the same time, some really wacky stuff can happen. So as a good practice, it is good to split up your collision checking from horizontal and vertical to avoid um, teleporting to the wrong spot because of e or corner collisions. So with this and this check collisions, let's go ahead and write the logic for collision checking. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, do if direction equals horizontal, I'll pass it for now, and then elif direction equals vertical, and pass it for now. And what we're going to do in each of these is we're going to check, we're going to loop through our block group and check if we're colliding with any of them. So for block in self dot block group, and then we're going to do if block dot rect dot collide rect self dot rect. So that is if this block in the block group has collided with our block, then we're going to have a check. Since we're doing horizontal, we're going to do this. If self dot velocity dot x is greater than zero, this means we are moving right. If we're moving right, then we want to reassign the right face of our um, object to the left face of our um, collision here. So we're going to do self dot rect dot right equals block dot rect dot left. And then we'll do if self dot velocity dot x is less than zero. So we are moving left self dot rect dot left equals block dot rect dot right. And so now the vertical is the exact same. It's just the changing of the velocity. So we'll just change um, the velocity to y here. And then this is now moving down and this is moving up. If we're moving down, we want to reassign the bottom of our sprite to the top of the collision and then the vice versa for the other direction. And now all we have to do here is simply make two method calls to this collision in the move method. So after we apply our horizontal velocity, so we are applying horizontal velocity, we are going to do self dot check collisions at horizontal. And then after we are applying our vertical velocity, oh, I cannot spell today. Then we're going to check the collisions for our vertical. And so what you'll notice is that now if we run this and all goes well, we're falling and there you go. We have landed on our platform and you'll notice that we actually flew through it at the bottom there. And the reason is because we have not put into place a proper terminal velocity. So let me go ahead and explain what's going on here. So we have our object. Our object is a simple square here and this square is having a gravity applied to it every single frame. So the gravity is equal to zero at the frame one, then it's equal to, let's say one, then it's equal to two. So it's moving two pixels down, that's equal to three. It's moving three pixels down, equal to four, moving four pixels down, et cetera, et cetera. Every single frame, it's rapidly com um, compounding onto itself. And so the problem is that the actual floor is here. And now when we have this block, I got to redraw it. Um, what we're doing is the gravity is is greater than the actual height of our floor. So let's say that the floor is 64 pixels tall. We are here and we are applying the gravity, which is let's say 80. So we are going from here all the way to here, checking collisions and we're, we're past it already. So we don't see any collisions. So I'll just keep on going about my day, just going all the way through the block. So we wanna prevent this from happening. So we don't wanna be applying a massive amount of gravity to our player. We want an actual terminal velocity to prevent this from happening. So for this, let's create a terminal velocity. So I'm going to do self.terminal velocity equals, and this is going to be our self.mass multiplied by our terminal velocity, which remember is a value that I put in the globals file here. And you'll notice that we have a couple more and we will get into those shortly, but this should be all set up. So now if we go to our player here and in the move, after we apply our gravity here, we are going to do the terminal velocity check. So terminal velocity check here. And what we'll do is we'll do if self.velocity.y is greater than self.terminal velocity, then self.velocity.y equals self.terminal velocity. So this will cap it 
at our terminal velocity. And since our terminal velocity constant is two and our mass of our player is five, this object can now no longer move any faster than 10 pixels per frame. And since our block is, uh, the size of it is 64 pixels, we have no issues with flying through it. So there you go, and you can see I'm waiting, have my hands off the keyboard, nothing's happening, we're all good. So now let's get some cool looking physics. Let's get some jumping going on here. And so let's go back to that, that globals file. This globals file has a player speed and a player jump power. First thing is, player's moving too slow, we are only applying a constant of one, easy fix, go to this self.rec.x plus equals self.velocity.x, and this is where we're applying our horizontal velocity, simply multiply this by our player speed. Run it. Now we're moving at a reasonable, reasonable speed. Maybe a little fast, but it's cool anyways. Now let's apply uh, some jumping terminology. They're not terminology, functionality. Let's make a new section in our input. I'm gonna call this input, or uh, not input, I'm gonna call this jumping. And here we are um, we are tempted to simply use this keys input to check for space. The problem with the keys input is it is checking if this key is being pressed down at all during this frame, if it is currently being pressed. It is not checking is the, ha, was this key pressed the very frame that I'm checking, meaning that it's pressed this frame. If it was pressed the frame before, don't do anything. We want the space to only register once because if we're registering every single frame, we're going to be adding an extra velocity to our player every single frame. We don't want that. We only want one press. So for this, we're going to actually create an event handler class. And so here I have an events.py and this is a basic event handler class. And I'm going to explain everything that's going on inside of this class here. So the event handler class has a constructor that actually doesn't matter. <laughs> um, and then we have a pull events and a key down. And what to notice is that actually in my main.py, I have replaced the looping through the pygame.event.get with this event handler.pull event. And the reason is because Pygame has a has events that happen every single frame, and it's sort of in a pool. And so if you take all the events with the pygame.event.get, that means if you try to get those events a second time, they're not going to be there. So if you want to, for example, check for a spacebar press in your player class, if you already pulled the events in your main class to check for your quitting, then it's not going to be there, it's not going to register. So one of the solutions is to create a static variable like event handler events here, and then be able to access this events variable from anywhere inside of your game. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing event handler.pull events, which is gathering the events, assigning it to the static variable. And then I am checking uh, through this event variable for the quit um, input. So we can use this event handler here to check for our space input. So let's go ahead and import it. So let's do from events import event handler. By the way, the code for that is linked in the description. And now what we can do is we can do if event handler dot key down. And what we want to do here is we want to do pygame.k underscore space. Then we are going to do this. So we're going to do self.velocity.y equals, and then we want to do a negative player jump power, which is that value that I put in the globals here. And so that's it. So now if we run it, we can move around, we press space and we jump. And you can notice that the jumping actually looks pretty natural, how we are, it's sort of a curve where you start off really, really fast and slow down as you get to the top and then accelerate as you go down. This is because we are applying some at least semi proper physics practices instead of just applying uh, or moving the position of the player statically. We are actually applying some um, acceleration and some velocity here. Um, so that's pretty cool. But the problem is that we are jumping forever. We can just jump wherever we want. And we can actually use this to check our horizontal collisions and stuff. As you can see, we are moving pretty fine here, but we can fly. And for Terraria, we don't want to fly right away, at least. We don't, we don't want to have them have wings when they spawn in. So let's add a grounded check. And there are a lot of different ways to do it. I have a way of doing it. Um, so let's go ahead and do it. So I'm going to create a new section. This is going to do, I'm going to call the section is grounded question mark, question mark, question mark, and self dot grounded. And I'm going to set it equal to true by default. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to check to see if we are grounded. So the very simple way that we can do it temporarily, um, we're going to do that today, but we're going to do something more complex in the future. Um, but for now, all we're going to do is if space is pressed, self dot grounded equals false. And 
um, that's it. And now all we have to do is in this uh, space, we have one more check here. So we're going to do if self.grounded and space is pressed. And then in the vertical here, we'll say that if we have collided with the top of something, then self.grounded equals true. So now if we run this, we're moving around, we jump, we try to jump again, we can't do it, we can't do it. So there you go. Now the only problem with this is that we can walk off, we can still jump. And this is a problem that I had for a long time. And there's not a super simple solution, but let's go ahead and talk about it. So the reason is because that we are only setting it to false whenever we uh, press space. But the problem is when you walk off a cliff, you're not pressing space, you're just walking off. So what we're gonna have to do is, we're gonna have to actually check for collisions and then if we collide with something, then grounded is true. Otherwise, it's not. So for this, I'm going to create a new thing. I'm going to do um, collisions equals zero. And then what we're going to do is if we collide with something, actually, I'm going to put that up here. Whoops. So we're going to do collisions equals zero. And then we're going to do in the velocity dot y greater than zero. Instead of just setting it to true, we're going to do um, collisions plus equals one. And then at the bottom here, while still inside this LF direction, we're going to do if collisions greater than zero, self.grounded equals true, else, and then self.grounded equals false. And now we can remove this setting it to false here, and we should be good to go. So now if we jump, we can only jump once, but now if we walk off the cliff, we can't jump anymore. So that is some very simple physics all up and running um, with Pygame. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. Um, in the next video, we're going to be covering some simple terrain generation. So yeah, thank you for watching. Have a good day. See ya.